Uh, Craig Amick. And I'm Lori Amick. And uh, we have two beautiful daughters. And uh, what we're here to talk about today is the one that's in heaven. Our oldest daughter, her name was Shelby Danielle, and our youngest daughter, her name is Haley Christine. Both of the girls were the highlight of our lives, and we have such amazing memories of raising both of them. Shelby was born with a congenital heart defect, and um, we knew the minute she was born that something wasn't right. And for quite some time, we slept at the bed watching her breathe and everything. And eventually she blossomed into a pretty sweet little toddler. About the time she turned into a toddler though, we started to notice some things that just weren't quite going as we had hoped. And her doctor recommended that we do a couple of procedures. Shelby was a trooper. She she just went right through her first surgery in Cincinnati and then her 10 hours of surgery of open heart surgery at Children's Hospital. She just got up from that surgery and she just led a perfectly normal life. After high school, Shelby went off to Kent State and she was at Kent State for a couple of years. And then when she came back from Kent State, she started seeing a young guy and they eventually got married. And they were married for 18 months. And after, I don't know, shortly into the marriage, things seemed to get progressively worse and there weren't any real answers. My brother and sister, they knew a lot of doctors, uh, both here in Columbus and elsewhere, and helped us get in contact with some really fantastic people, physicians. And uh, over a period of, uh, I don't know, a couple of years, they're like, we think Shelby might need to start thinking about um, becoming a candidate for a heart transplant. She went through the surgery very, very well. And, um, you know, she was uh, just laying in bed, recovering and doing good. And She was talking and texting and hanging out on Facebook. And um, eventually she got up and took a few steps. And so she had declared at that moment that by July 4th, she was going to be out of the hospital. And then we got the news that she had a bed sore and she uh, got this nasty fungal infection in it and she had no immune system and away we went for a while. I remember thinking to myself, well, I, I'm a Christian. Um, Jesus loves me. He's not going to let Shelby die. Shelby's a Christian. For countless hours, we laid at her bedside, and I just held her hand. And I remember the scripture that you've heard 10 million times, the 23rd Psalm. But at that moment, that scripture took on new meaning. Because when he says, he leadeth me beside still water, I believe at that moment that Shelby was really transitioning. <laughs> Sorry. You know, the big question everybody asks is why? You know, we had no understanding why this would happen to us. I never did understand it, and I never will understand it. But when you bury a child, that's that's probably one of the most painful things there is. But I have faith. I, I believe, I, I know where she's at. I know where she's at. I have thought about the Israelites over and over and over in the six plus years that she's been gone. And um, you know how they must have felt looking for a way out. We literally wandered for a good three years, just staggered around. I kind of equate it to The Walking Dead. If you've ever seen The Walking Dead, it, it's kind of like that's how we felt. It, we just wandered aimlessly and staggered, had no idea where we were going. I was telling my circle group this morning that in all the times that I said, God, why are you silent? Where are you in this wilderness? Um, not too long ago, it kind of struck me. He said, if you would just be quiet enough to listen, 
I'm right here with you. He's been trying to tell me it's okay. It's okay. Shelby knew Jesus, and that is our hope. Some of the stuff Shelby said when she was in the bed is just, was just hope. Hope. At one time, she was out and for a few days, and her aunt was in there, and she woke up and was really disappointed and looked at her aunt and said, they brought me back. And I mean, things like that have given me so much hope and it was almost like she was sharing a journey with us at the time that she was going through something tragic. So I believe a lot of that helped me through a lot of the darkness that when she passed. I've been a Christ follower and have been in church since I was yay high. And um, I've read the Bible many times, I've read scriptures, I've attended classes, Bible studies, youth groups, you name it. But it just became routine, right? And then after this journey in our wilderness, the words became alive. And um, I just, when I'm reading scripture, there is something new every time that he wants to teach me. And, um, you know, we're not out of the wilderness. Um, as a matter of fact, we had another tragic event in our family just this January. But he keeps trying to, to teach me and to train me and to help me see that he is sovereign and that he is divine and that he will never forsake me nor leave me.